Good evening. Please, if I can ask that you put your phones on silent. I would ask you to turn them off, but I know you won't. So uh, silent works. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for being here and welcome everyone. You know, we are here in Aventura. We are the flagship condominium municipality in the state of Florida. So it only made perfect sense for this program to be rolled out, this opportunity here in our beautiful commission chambers. And we are very pleased to host and provide this venue, but this is not an Aventura show. I'm only too willing to take credit when I feel like we deserve it, but tonight is not about us, it's about the county. So let me first recognize the fellow commissioners, Aventura City, commissioners that are here, Commissioner Paul Cruz, Commissioner Linda Marks, Commissioner uh, uh, Vice Mayor Billy Joel, Commissioner Michael Stern, uh, Commissioner Phyllis Smith from North Miami Beach. If, I'm, if I missed anyone, if you're important, just raise your hand, please. Um, Everyone here is important, so you should have all raised your hands. There you go. So really, this is about the folks from the county that have seen the need and they're addressing it. So let me first introduce our wonderful, wonderful county mayor, the mayor of Miami-Dade County, Mayor Cava. Our county commissioner, you all remember Sally Heyman. So those are big shoes to fill. They're being very, very admirably filled by our very dear friend, Commissioner Steinberg. The next people I'm gonna introduce are people that I don't know. But so you know what that means? That means they're really getting it done, right? That's who's gonna make this work at the direction of their bosses. So. Uh, Forgive me if I miss you or say your name wrong. Uh, Clarence Brown, the Interim Director of Public Housing and Community Development. Sean Tops is a, the Loan Processing Supervisor. That's correct. Uh, Lourdes Gomez, Development Services. Did I miss anyone? I do wanna mention that Kevin Klopp, our very, very fine Director of Community Development here in the city of Aventura is here as well. He does a fabulous job. So realistically, as we all know, um, it was the Surfside collapse uh, that caused us to learn a great deal. And we have to face the realities that cond condominiums must be better maintained. It's been, it's been difficult for all of us. I'm just gonna tell you personally, uh, $30,000, that's the assessment I was just hit with last month. So it's real, it's painful, and we're all facing it. Um, this could be a, a lifeline, really, a, house, a housing line. This can really, really, really save homes for people. That's the point of it. So we are proud that our county mayor and our county commissioner are so dedicated to helping those in need. Uh, mayor Cava said when she ran, she's going to be a mayor who cares. and. Every day she proves that. So without further ado, I'm going to get the ball rolling because, again, this is not Amatora's show. I'm going to turn the floor over to Commissioner Steinberg. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor Weinberg, for allowing us this wonderful platform in which we can communicate to everybody um, the importance of this program. Thank you to the Aventura administration and commission that is here and also North Miami Beach Commissioner as well. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for coming to tonight's town hall to discuss our new condominium special assessment loan program. It actually was voted on by the commission prior to my being on the uh, commission, but I thought it was imperative that we, now that the program has been rolled out, that we um, have a platform to discuss it. Um, I would like to thank our mayor, Mayor Daniela Levine Cava, uh, for being here this evening and joining us in this important discussion. And during tonight's town hall, you will have the opportunity to learn more about Miami-Dade County's new program that helps condominium owners like yourselves uh, with the cost of special assessments for structural repairs. 
We all know how important these repairs are not only to the maintenance of the building, but also to the health and safety of our residents. We want to do whatever we can to ensure that these repairs are possible and uphold the integrity of the recertification process. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the mayor who will of course then introduce the guest speakers of the night. Good evening, everyone. A pleasure to be back here with you in the beautiful city of Aventura and in your wonderful city hall. And I'm so excited to see such a group of large group of people that have come out tonight. This is a critically important topic and we're very, very eager to share with you what we're doing and listen to you, your questions and concerns. And I wanna thank Amir Weinberg for inviting us and for our commissioner for making sure that uh, the county programs are here uh, for you. It's all about you. And uh, we're, we're eager to, to have this conversation. And before I get into it, I just want to tell you a little bit about how it came about. So as your mayor said, there was Surfside and the towers collapsed. And immediately we went into action to save whoever we could save and to uh, protect uh, the lives. As well, immediately we went into overdrive to find out what we could do to protect others from that kind of tragedy. And we worked with Lourdes Gomez, our Director of Regulatory and Economic Resources, or RER, who's responsible for the building recertification program, among others. We immediately did an inventory of our county recertification process and buildings that were lined up. And we wanted to be sure that anyone who might have been delayed in the process, that there was nothing life threatening. We went out, we did an immediate assessment, and we accelerated all of those. And Lourdes could tell you more about that. And uh, we also looked immediately what we could do to change the laws and protections for people who live in condominiums. Uh, Senator, now Commissioner Renee Garcia, took the lead in writing legislation that created a, a registry, a public facing transparency about things that go on in condominiums. And we're very hopeful that that will prove very useful. And again, Lourdes could, could tell you more about that. And then we were able to say, we know that people need help, especially older buildings and people haven't been paying into this reserve fund or they don't have the funds to pay into it. And we can't allow that to jeopardize people's uh, health and safety. So what could we do? Uh, and that is really the, the, the genesis of this program. Of course, the state also had to do its part because so much of condominium law is dictated by the state. And we lobbied and we finally something was passed. And of course, we're adhering to, we already had most everything <laughs> that was in the state law, we already had but there were some tweaks uh, that we've added. And again, this is Lourdes's area, um, but uh, we know that everybody needs this kind of protection. And unfortunately it's a tragedy that brings these things to bear. And then we react and then we do something to try to prevent uh, future tragedies. So we do feel we've made some progress where we feel good about it. And we have our uh, interim director for public housing and community development, Clarence Brown here, who's administering the program. So we actually passed a number of programs to help with housing issues in the last uh, budget. So the county budget is passed in September, goes into effect in October. And uh, this is one of the programs that we, we built in. So uh, with that, um, let me say, this is meant the condo, a special assessment program is meant to help condominium owners who live in their units uh, with the cost of special assessments that arise from structural repairs, because that's really the safety issue that we're targeting. It's part of a larger effort by my administration called the Building Blocks Fund to make sure that, um, that we can do everything possible to assist people with housing. I personally believe housing is a basic right and that we need to do everything to make sure that people can be safe and secure in their homes. Uh, they're meant to help particularly people who are in the low to moderate income range, homeowners, 
and it's a zero interest loan for households earning up to 140% of the area median income. And just to tell you what that exactly means, for an individual, that would be up to 95,620. For couples, it's up to 109,200. For three persons, 122,920. And households of four, 136,500. So most of our government programs are at a much lower income level, but because we know people are struggling to pay the bills into our middle class, it goes up to that level. So I don't know obviously anything about those of you in the room and whether you would qualify, but hopefully it will benefit many, many people who could not afford to uh, pay for these repairs otherwise. Uh, more detail will come uh, from the experts. The loans are up to $50,000 with a 40 year repayment term. Okay, this is pretty good guys. Zero interest, 50,000, 40 years. Okay, I don't know where else you get a product like that. But again, the point was to make it very accessible and monthly payments could be as low as $50 a month. I guess it's based on income, what the payments would be. Uh, the program guidelines are available in three languages, English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. Um, so after that, I don't know the details, these fine people do, but I'm very, very proud of the work that they've done. And we hope that we can help many, many people. And we also want to learn from you any other ways that we can be of support. I will tell you as well, we do have an office of housing advocacy. It's another new office within our county government that helps people regardless of situation who are struggling with their housing needs. So that is part of our social service side, Community Action and Human Services Department. So we're, we're working hard to, to try to be responsive and provide for the needs of our community. So with that, um, who's next? Clarence Brown, well, let's welcome him up. Thank you so much, Clarence. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I prepared a very brief uh, PowerPoint that we're gonna walk through and talk about a couple of the uh, highlights of the program. Um, and then after that, give you an opportunity to ask us any questions you may have. Okay, uh, if I can get some IT assistance, it's big on my screen here. That closes notes. No notes. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Okay, great. So the condo assessment program is designed, uh, as the mayor indicated, to assist. Uh, when you have those structural repairs that are required. Now, we understand that sometimes that comes out of the 40-year research, uh, but it does not have to necessarily be associated with the 40-year research. Uh, and one of the distinctions we really wanted to be able to make is not for those aesthetic improvements or amenities that sometimes condo buildings are looking at. So just be mindful of that uh, when you're uh, considering the program. Oops, sorry about that. Also, uh, we indicated up to 140% area median income, $50,000 is the max. However, we're seeing that some uh, loans are coming in at $10,000, uh, $15,000. And of course, your payment is going to be based on your loan side. So if you are 
uh, um, within the low income range, you can have a smaller payment than that fifty uh, dollars $50 a month. For those in moderate income, it'll basically be the uh, loan amount uh, over the 40 years. We prepared a slide here just to go over the income. When we look at income, of course, we look at family size and look at all the income in the household. So as you can see here, we have a total family size that goes all the way up to eight. And our maximum income level is 140% area meet income. So uh, as you can see, a family of four at 140% area median income is $136,000. So we really believe this is a program that can help a lot of families uh, that could use the assistance. One of the things to be mindful of is because this is associated with structural issues, there is a lot of cooperation we would have to have uh, in dealing with the associations. You know, we were dealing with questions on a regular basis you know, okay, I'm taking out a loan, but why is the money going to the association? Well, the association is doing the repairs. So we have to document the repairs, document the work, making sure that the scope is, uh, is appropriate and that the work is going to be moving forward. So all of that would be worked out as you're processing the loan uh, with the uh, team over at Public Housing and Community Development. And that team is led by my, my good friend, Sean Topps there who will be helping us fill some of the questions tonight. So saying all of that, it's a very brief uh, presentation. Uh, how to apply some information here is a paper application. We're working on that, Madam Mayor, I promise, uh, to, get it to get it to an electronic format. Um, but one last thing I wanna leave you with before we open it up for questions is the, uh, the, the thing of assets because we're talking about income, we do consider assets. Uh, so right now the current policy is any cash asset greater than $50,000, anyone having greater than $50,000 in a cash asset has to contribute 10% towards their loan. So for example, if you're looking for a $50,000 loan, you would have to contribute at least $5,000 towards that loan. So I wanted to put that out there because that is one of the things that some people are asking about and are concerned about. So that's the program in a nutshell. We brought applications in Spanish, English, and in Creole. I believe they're out in the lobby. They're available for you to take, uh, but we'll be here to answer any questions you have. Uh, those one-on-ones will be here to answer those as well. So if you have general questions, uh, we'll take those, uh, Madam Mayor, Madam Commissioner. Yes, there's a, uh, Lourdes, I don't know if there's anything you want to add really quickly, and then we're going to, we have a microphone set up right in the middle of the aisle for anybody who would like to come up and ask any questions. And I'll also say that, you know, staff will stay on a little bit after the town hall so that if you have an individual question that you may not want to ask in front of all of us, they'll be here to stay for a little bit so you can ask them. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Lourdes Gomez. Uh, I'm the director at the county of the Department of Regulatory and Economic Resources, which at the county houses um, many of the development functions. Um, and it also includes uh, the procedures which reign countywide. And you have your own building jurisdiction here in Aventura, um, and your director is here. So building jurisdictions will administer the recertification uh, processes within their own city. Um, but at the county, uh, we do uh, have in, in our code the structure that the cities follow with respect to um, the recertification process. So I would invite you to, if you, if you have questions about the specifics of recertification in your city, you should absolutely be in touch with your building jurisdiction and your building official because they will help guide you through that process. And, and I hope you, you all have heard what that recertification uh, process entails. I know it became you know, uh, famous globally, I think, unfortunately, in, in light of Surfside, um, but recertification is the process by which you know, we hope that um, building health is really checked. Um, in the county, it had been a practice uh, since the 70s, and we, were, uh, we, we, we in Broward County were alone in being uh, implementers of, of that process. Um, and now it's been adopted um, around, you know, in, in, other, in other parts of, of the nation, in Florida, the legislature acted on it, 
and we here locally also uh, strengthened some of the existing provisions around recertification. Um, and it entails uh, commit your, your structure would commission a, an engineer uh, to provide an assessment. And there are specific questions that they are uh, taken through in that process. And again, it's all to get uh, attention, to get a set of eyes on, on, your, on your structure and ensure that it is safe uh, and sound structurally and electrically. And if it isn't, um, it's, a, it's a vehicle for you to then take action to, to make the repairs, which again, you would deal with through your building jurisdiction. Um, separate from the actions that were taken around uh, strengthening that recertification process, um, the county also, as the mayor mentioned, uh, undertook another transparency measure that has come into effect uh, at the beginning of this, of this year, which was the condo registry. And uh, if, you, you, if you are in an association and there's certain statutes that govern that, um, you are required to register with the county and provide uh, documentation. A lot of it has to do with sim simple access to information of officers, um, insurance information, financial health, that sort of uh, documentation. So that again, it, it was a measure of transparency to allow uh, future future purchasers to be informed um, uh, in a readily accessible manner um, and and current residents as well to be informed of the status of of their building and its condition not just uh, in terms of the building health but also financially which is extremely important in maintaining building health um, so if you have any questions about that I'm happy to answer them and thank you thank you for coming thank you for your interest Thank you. Um, yes, so I guess you can start your questions, state your name and, and, and. Thank you. Number one, thank you all for this amazing program. It's gonna help thousands and thousands of people. My name is Shelley Mason Buncher. I live like many other people who were here in Biscayne Cove in Aventura. Um, my question is specific to our complex because the way our special assessment for the 40 year recertification, which is currently in process, uh, is going to be structured is until the work is completed in about two years or so, uh, we will be paying interest only on a line of credit from the bank. That's nominal. Our big assessment's gonna come up in two years, more or less, when the work is completed and they have a final amount and the line of credit turns into a loan. At that point, we'll be assessed big time, really big time. And my fear is that funds will run out in two years. Um, and or how do you see we might be able to make this work for us? Or is that impossible to answer? <laughs> Good news is we're pretty flexible. Um, so, but one of the things I think we'll do is I'll have my team reach out to the association. But to your initial concern about the two years, um, the, their, the initial allocation being at nine million, we will have the ability to reauthorize additional dollars at the direction of the mayor. So that should uh, uh, alleviate some of the concern. I, I approve. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, but uh, we still want to have a conversation with your association to see if there is some way to uh, work with them during this interim, because it, it has to be kind of nerve wracking, right, to not know what that number is going to be. Um, we They have a range in the next board meeting. They will probably come up with announcing that to the public. But um, it, yes, it's a range and it's not going to be assessed at that amount for two years or so. Yes, yeah, so I think we can find a way because of the flexibilities within our policy. So uh, definitely make sure you get an application and get a card uh, so that we can follow up with the, um, the condo association. Do you want the phone number of the treasurer? <laughs> sure. Okay, I don't know it in my head. I'll write it down and give it to you. Thank you. Thank you. I too, thank you very much. Yes, I'm a commissioner. Right now, I'm a commissioner that doesn't commission. If 
But I also for 43 years have been a real estate agent. So I live in a private residence, so this does not affect me. But my general question is, that $50,000 will be a lien against the property owner. If the property sells in the 40 years, each condominium has a different thing. Some it has to be paid at closing, some you can assume it. So how have we factored that into what the loan would be that somebody could sell the property and that is mandated that it goes no matter what the condominium says, that it goes to the new buyer? Actually, it's a uh, repayment upon sale. Okay, yes. so that will change their net to them when they sell, especially these smaller condominiums. Not everything is worth 700 or $2 million. There are quite a few. I, in the city that I do represent, there is a condemned building. For a year and a half, the people that own it have been paying their mortgage and paying their condo association and had to pay rent. So they're really in the hole. I mean, a family is sleeping on their brother's floor. So is there anything there? Structural was the use, $50,000 to structural. But is there anything working in the state to help people that had to move out, had to continue paying, and had to pay for a place they're living. Okay, you're the expert, right? And you don't know about such a thing, right? I do not. I think it's really a good thing to bring to the state uh, representative's attention. And for example, for Surfside, there were many people who still owed their uh, mortgage. And we went to, we actually supported them to go to their banks. And the, the legislature did allow not to have to pay tax until the settlement was finalized and people got their payments. But they, they were relieved of property taxes, basically, because we couldn't do that locally. But these are things that require state intervention. That is a fabulous suggestion and I will be on that tomorrow morning, but I can also tell you that when you have an isolated building, Surfside got so much national, international attention, it was a little different than one little isolated no, building. No, but, but I think it tells a story. Now that Absolutely. we have increased the re requirements and the monitoring and the certifications, we need to have some protections on the It back set end. up a president for sure, and I will take that. <laughs> and my last question, <laughs> for sure. And my last question is on the structural. So when structural work is done, because that was the words I heard, that the loan is going to be based on structural only. In other words, if you need to change your carpet in your hallways, you're not going to use the loan. But once you do structural, many times you have to do painting, you have to maybe change the balconies. So would that be also under that umbrella? Yes. Okay. I thank you for your time because it's not for me, but I'll I'll spread that knowledge in my area. Thank you very much. My name is Stuart Kalishman, and I'd like to speak to thank the, the two speakers that were just before me, especially Phyllis. Uh, she took my questions practically away from me. Um, she alluded to the condominium in North Miami Beach, which I think she's alluding to Crestview, and it made national news. And there were special circumstances that happened with, with Crestview. But the first speaker was talking about the amount of funding that's available. And I heard a magic number of $9 million get mentioned. The person who introduced himself at the very beginning of this session had said that it's a reality and he's being charged $30,000 as an assessment, assuming that the average condominium has about 300 unit owners in it, 300 times that $30,000 is $9 million. It could easily get wiped out with just one building applying for this loan. So I'm, I'm just asking in no uncertain terms, 
how many millions of dollars has been set aside for this program? So um, we were just talking about that. So the initial set aside is $9 million. Which is enough to cover the one condominium that the first So we're started. really excited to expand it as necessary. The funding comes from our surtax program, and it comes from a portion of the surtax program that is specifically for home ownership. And uh, actually, we, we have a, additional funds, and we will expand it as the need arises. We're talking about surtax as related to sales tax, where the different counties have a surtax added on to the state sales tax, or is this a No, this is our tax? local surtax that was passed many years ago that is specific to Miami-Dade County and uh, comes from um, uh, property, property sales, and doc documentary stamps. And we have a portion that is supposed to go for home ownership. Others are used for rental. And in actual fact, we've had some difficulty spending the home ownership portion. And this will be a way, a really good way that will help condominium owners. So we're very, uh, it is a very creative program. Um, and it's actually getting some, some attention from other places because of it. Okay, because yeah. some condominiums are coming up on their 40, some are yes. coming up on their 50. Yes. And I understand now with the new mile markers or whatever it's been converted to, uh, there's probably a good number of condominiums coming in. This, how long will it, I mean, the, it sounds like the 9 million is gone already from. No, in fact, it, it, it hasn't because we've just started the program. So uh, do you want to say anything more about this? Sure. <clears throat> Although the, the interest is, um, is, is peaking, uh, we have not you know, scratched the surface of that $9 million. And that's why we're doing more and more uh, outreach uh, so that people are aware that these funds are available. OK, so it's not a matter that if this assessment that a building gives to the unit owners happens a year from now, six months from now, two months from now, from your surtax that you have been collecting in the past, that money will suddenly be thrown into this program to meet the demand. Yes, and surtax, uh, just for the benefit of the audience, is an ongoing um, allocation. Uh, we receive a, a monthly allocation in surtax. Uh, so we will have the ability to continue to fund this program. It is not a time limited program. It wasn't a one time allocation. It's it's something that we anticipate continuing and you do have to be eligible. So there will be others who would want to have access, but we've gone through the eligibility rules. So that is uh, not everyone will qualify, but we look to me, the most important thing is for people to be able to stay in their homes. We do not want homes to be demolished and replaced with more expensive homes. We want people to be able to make the necessary repairs to safely stay in their homes. That's a key part of affordability in a place that is becoming increasingly unaffordable. So this is a very important program that I'm thrilled we could develop. And you have my commitment that we will continue this program to assist people. Okay, I'm not envisioning that the building be thrown down to the ground and built up with a newer building. I'm just envisioning people not being able to afford to stay where they're living and have to find cheaper quarters elsewhere. In actual fact, we know that landlords are in this market taking advantage of needs for repairs as an opportunity to uh, rebuild a more expensive unit. So we want to, we see this as preserving affordability. Okay. Thank you for answering my question completely. Thank you so much. Good evening. And thank you for coming to Aventura uh, and for the presentation. Uh, um, fortunately, I was a few minutes late and I just wanted to review the eligibility requirement just for a, a family size of one. So is the um, maximum income that qualifies you for the program, is it the 68,300? It's 95,000. 95. Okay. 90, so, 
what is so it? the last column, depending on the family size, is the eligibility financially. Thank you. Correct. And then also, if you have assets worth 50000 or more, you would be required to contribute something towards the, the loan. If you could, Clarence, explain that again. What's an asset? Yes. Yes. Um, you know, we've described it as cash assets. So money in the bank or money readily uh, that can be turned into cash. So it's not anything that's not, uh, that can't be uh, liquid. So does it have to be something liquid? It's not, you have to sell an asset. Yes, you do not have to sell, sell an, an asset. asset. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you have cash in the bank or something else liquid. Stocks and bonds. Uh, good evening, and thank you so much for coming to our beautiful city of Aventura. My name is Sandra Sepulveda, and I represent um, an association, actually. Um, this is a loan. I understand that if you have $50,000 or liquid assets or more in your account, you had to do 10% down. Um, two questions. Once we submit the whole package to Miami-Dade, how long does it take to get approved? And number two, are there any closing costs related to the loan? The, the first question, how long does it take? Um, that's sort of a kind of fluid because of the cooperation I talked about a little earlier. Uh, we have to get the information from the association, mm -hmm. uh, which includes the whole work right up contracts Correct. and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but the to actual close on the loan does not take long at all. Okay, I I actually visited Miami Day back in January 6th and I talked to the person in charge and um, I think it's by the Overtown train station building. <laughs> um, and they told me it depends um, as long as you submit a complete package, make sure the association cooperates, which that's what we're trying to do with, for our residents. Now, are there any closing costs related to this loan? No, I've just been um, uh, reminded by my uh, <laughs> supervisor here, there are no closing costs. Oh, that's who I met actually, Mr. Sean Tops. Sean Tops. Yes, yes, I met him. <laughs> okay, so no closing costs. No closing costs. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. take a chance here because you won't hear me with this one. Hi, good evening. My name is Ronnie Elias. I've lived here in Aventura for about 15 years. I remember Mayor Kamba when. Uh, I'm a social worker. Um, I, my question is this. We started structural repairs in my building a few, a few years ago. It predated Surfside. Um, we're kind of coming. I think we have one or two years left, but a lot of us are paying a steep loan here with high interest. Um, considering that we're coming to the end of this, uh, should we still apply? Because we're going to be paying this for the next 10 years, uh, those of us that live in the building. And it, it's, it's really a burden on some of us. Um, so that's my question. It's going to be over. We're doing the repairs. Most of them are finished. They're still working on the garage. We had a similar problem to Surfside with the pool deck in the garage. So thank God um, the board jumped on it right away. But that's my question. Are we eligible to apply, those of us who live there, even though we're coming to the end of the construction at this point? Wow, that's a tough one. I, I, um, and I, yeah. the, reason it, the reason it's a tough one is because the way the program was designed is that the loan would come in at the initial. Mm. You know, when the association and the members are deciding on, hey, which route do we want to go? Do we want to have this huge assessment? Do we want to take out a loan? Do we want to do this? That's when we would uh, be able to come in. Right. However, I did say that we're flexible in our policies. So if there is a situation where the association could establish that there is a um, finite fee associated with the work,
that could be translated into a loan. I believe that's something that we could take a look at. But again, that's one of those one-on-ones that we would probably need to talk through to see exactly what the financing is and what we would be taking out. Okay, who do I who do I talk to? Who do I contact? Or do I wait to the end and talk to one of you? You can you can wait to the end, get my card, and you'll get Sean's information so that we can help you uh, work through this process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We have any other speakers? Questions? Two more. Okay. Yes. Please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tuna Alper. I have two questions. One of them is, uh, as a gentleman mentioned earlier, there's only nine million dollars, as you indicated, might go up, but allocated. So if you say everybody gets fifty thousand, you only got one hundred eighty unit owners taking the loan, and so is there any? Priority that's being given to the uh, to the loans for the projects. The priority is whoever is income eligible and who needs it. The money is there. There is no waiting. I do not want any of you to think that there is a chance for the money to run out. The mayor has made it clear that this program does not have a time limit. So today next year or the year thereafter, we will have this program and we will have funding available. Okay, and the other question is, uh, as the other uh, lady before me mentioned, we already have a uh, special assessment allocated some like four years ago and the loan is taken out. So could we take out this loan to pay our portion for the uh, special assessment? Again, that's gonna take some discussion, especially with the association. Um, so I don't wanna give you a definitive answer, but because we have flexibility within our policy, uh, we can at least talk about what it would look like. If we can get to a finite number that's associated to that homeowner, uh, their portion that we can translate into a loan, then that is a possibility. So, but we need to look at the details and see what the association is able to do with us. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, hi, I'm Begoña Calcerrada and I live in Point East. We have four corporations. We are a 55 and over community. I'm the president of Corporation Two, and we need your help. We have 1,400 apartments. We are going to through the recertification. And uh, like in my corporation, we just finished with the elevators, with uh, roofs, and uh, well, we would like if you can visit us and we can talk about how you can help us. Uh, you have my card over here and can contact me anytime. And thank you so much and welcome here to Aventura. Okay, bye. Thank you, Begonia. Thank you very much for presenting this tonight. I appreciate it. I am a 20 year owner of Aventura and we've gone through many, many re rebuilds or what. Uh, and wait a second, my brain is freezing. Uh, payments for renewing and fixing the building. Our building has, is like a pig that we're paying money to slop lipstick on and it just keeps on. So we keep on pouring money in. We get assessments left and right. Uh, we've had many assessments. We've not replaced the windows in the building. It's a 40 year old building. So this money can help, I hope, to pay our assessment for replacing our windows. I think under the new statutes and everything that all of the buildings should have hurricane proof windows uh, before a certain date. So that's one of the things that I'm asking that hopefully that money can be used towards that. Yes. 
Thank you. Uh, that's a help. Be brevity. Thank you. I think we have one more speaker. One more. Oh, <clears throat> one more resident. Oh, Good evening. My name is uh, Michel Benaroche. I live in Aventura. And I'm involved in uh, several, directly and in, indirectly, with several boards of directors throughout the city. Uh, I'm going to just make a couple of observations. I don't, I don't necessarily expect answers. My concern, from what I've heard, and I'm <clears throat> involved again, pretty in depth with several boards. My concern is that in reality, nobody knows what's really going to happen financially and, and structurally to all those the, the, the thousands and thousands of buildings that are in Florida in this, in this uh, situation. Um, it seems to me that uh, when the inspection, the inspection will start, the inspectors are going to go on the safe side for liability reasons and recommend everything that they got, that's going to strike their eyes and observation. So it's going to be extremely costly. And again, nobody knows what really will be the final amount of dollars. Um, and I'm also afraid that, unfortunately, I'm going to say something a little unpleasant, but um, we're going to have a shortage of engineers, and we're going to have a shortage of contractors. On top of that, contractors are going to be very tempted to abuse the situation and charge huge amount of money if they even have the time to do the work to all those buildings. And those, those components that I just described are really what's scaring me the most in that situation. And again, no one, if you're honest, no one knows how this is going to end. So that's my observation. Yeah, thank you so much. So uh, thank you for the points. And, you know, there was a, build, a building that fell and there was a reaction. And the idea is to create more protections and it is a new approach. So it remains to be seen how it will play out. And these are all very important points that you raise. I, I would like Lourdes Gomez to talk about how the county does recertification, because we actually have a process that's a little more um, robust than, yes. than maybe the state required. And so I want to, to share that. As far as um, how many buildings will be affected, yes. And that is why it's so important to make timely repairs. And that is why we're making this program available so that buildings will pass recertification so that it, we will not have those problems later on. So please, Lori. Yes, thank you, thank you. So um, I, I just wanna reiterate, uh, you know, certainly I, I understand that concern. Um, keep in mind, uh, recertification was previously required. Um, what we did with the revisions uh, to the process was really scrutinize the uh, line of questioning to the engineer, you know, to ensure that um, areas that we thought were critical were not overlooked. Um, so I, I don't know that I would attribute a, a cost escalation to, to the process um, because we, you know, our staff firmly believes all of our building staff and, and in formulating these recommendations, by the way, we consulted um, professionals and, and building officials countywide, including your building official. Um, so, so, you know, certainly it is the consensus in, in the industry that um, good maintenance ultimately leads uh, to lower costs longer term on a building. You know, the, the better, the more you take care of it, the better you are at that, you know, over the long term, you know, certainly your, your costs and your value, um, your cost is lowered and hopefully your value uh, keeps or, or goes up. Um, so, you know, but with respect to, to the requirements themselves, uh, a lot of it again was um, providing evidence to the jurisdiction. You know, we rely on your professional engineer that you have hired. We, and there's two components: there's a structural component and an electrical component. Um, so the 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 questioning itself um, was to the 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 components of the building that are critical. You know, for safety. Um, so again, I, I 
you know, just to assure you, I don't, I don't think there was uh, any additional layering, I guess, of, of um, what you might consider to be unnecessary, uh, unnecessary factors. Um, and, you know, just, just generally the, you, you can always, um, you know, to the extent that your engineer, they're being hired by you, by your building. So to the extent that you have questions about their determination, that's well within you know, your authority to, to ask as, as, a, as a property owner, as an association, um, you should question your engineer about what they're doing. All, all of the jurisdictions have their, uh, their instructions available. You can, in the county, we have a, a common uh, template so you can look at that online if you're interested. I, I invite you all to look at the county's website, even though, again, if you're recertifying in Aventura, you should look toward your building jurisdiction for their specific line of questioning. But there's a common template that was adopted by the county, and it, it, you can see what the, what the questions are um, that, that, that it covers. Your jurisdiction may have some more, specific, uh, more specificity to it, and, and those are all things you should discuss with, with your building official. Thank you very much. If I may, I have an ad additional question, which is really uh, uh, real, because I'm, I'm dealing with it as we speak in two different cases. Again, and I don't want to say anything unfortunate about the city of Miami and the habits of contractors, engineers, and everything, but we all know, even if we don't say it, that there is a lot of abuse. Uh, abuse of power and financial abuse, not from the city. I'm talking about private companies. I have two examples right now where, as you know, boards of directors are not engineers. We have no idea what we're talking about. And we are facing two situations in two different buildings now where engineers are trying to impose, and we have demonstrated that with, with the help of other engineering firms that it was not necessary, but they're trying to impose unbelievable work that in reality is not necessary. How can we get help from the city, if possible, uh, or the, the, the authorities to, uh, you know, can we get help from the city to address the situation and to help board of directors to, you know, to find the truth about what has to be done. And you, you know what I'm saying is true. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, without, not, without not, knowing the specifics of that situation, yeah. you, you may wish to contact your building official because certainly, you know, if there's a, perhaps there may be an existing violation in the building or something that requires remedy. If, if, if the issue goes to a specific question, in the recertification form, certainly that would be the appropriate, you know, person to tell you what he will accept or not, he or she will accept or not. Well, and, and trust I me, like it's not, I'm sorry, just one thing. Yeah. When you are in my seat or those people's seat, trying to con just contact the city and talk to somebody is really not simple. So, so uh, yeah, so every city does their own. And uh, we know that uh, the abuses that you're describing are contrary to the law, right? Price gouging and the like. So I'm going to take the concern to our state attorney who has been very vigilant about price gouging in other emergency situations to see maybe there's a grand jury even that could be convened on this subject uh, because as you say, it's really an avalanche of different properties that are all going to need these services. And how are we going to make sure that uh, people are getting the services they need at a reasonable price and, and, and just the services they need, not more than the services they need. So those are all great points. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Diego Cespedes. I've been um, living here in Aventura for 12 years, an owner for nine. Uh, my question, and, and actually expanding on a, a lady that uh, prior had asked, um, our building uh, about two years ago started with the process, with the recertification process. Uh, we had a, the, our, the, our seawall gave up, but uh, everything's being worked. Actually, the contractor uh, went out of business like six months ago and all, but uh, the, the, our building is hiring another one and uh, to finish it off. 
uh, or building the roof was changed and they've been working on it uh, on and off. Initially, we got a $17 million uh, loan um, and we were, paying int we were paying interest actually up until May and from there on it goes, it goes up. Now we're going into a second loan that we're gonna to have to request, uh, which could be anywhere between six to $10 million. And that is to, uh, to work on the pool area. I mean, and the FPNL bolt is below the pool and it was leaking, uh, a whole dimer kind of uh, thing got nothing. I mean, it's, it's being handled as, as I understand. And, uh, and I do believe that our, our board has been on top of everything though. But, uh, I mean, with that uh, that loan that it's been going on, I and mean, we've been paying up for interest for the last uh, almost two years up until this May, and it's gonna we're gonna start paying the loan itself. I mean, and the new loan coming up that we we still don't know how much is gonna be and all that. That's uh, that's that's a lot of money. It's, it's really gonna put a lot of stress on everybody. It which is already is doing a lot of stress, and it's gonna go more. I mean, we our building doesn't have reserves, but I do understand that in the, in a year or two, every building is going to be mandatory to have reserves. So it's uh, that puts a lot of a lot of pressure on on everyone. I mean, that I mean, people that lives on fixed income or or just us that uh, we just go out every day and work and make money to make a living, and we really don't want to leave our 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 apartments, our condos, or our way of living and I mean, or have to sell or whatever there is. I mean, so I, I appreciate your, your efforts and everything else. I mean, but uh, the question is specifically is, okay, yes, is, there's, a, there's an existing loan and there's gonna be more to come. So I, I do understand that the nine, I mean, 9 million is, is not gonna be much for, for about everyone, but uh, there's gonna be, I mean, more flow of money to come in that regard, but it, those, Prior loans, I mean, it's is that going to be covered? I I I believe you said that uh, that we could. I mean, that, that there's something might might be done with the associations or something like that. I mean, we just uh, want to have assurance. I mean, that something is going to be worked out. Right, and I can't give you those types of assurances because obviously I don't know what the loan looks like, and I don't know what the terms are. But what we can do is we can have the discussion with the association to see if there is an option uh, for our loan product to assist the homeowner based on the loan that you, the association, I'm sorry, has already taken out. We're willing to have that conversation to see what we can work out. Appreciate it. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you. And I believe you are our last public question. Yeah, come up. Um, and then, of course, as I said before, staff will stay if you have individual questions um, and, and we'll answer any other questions you may have. And we have our cards and we're happy to give out more information, but please. Okay. Hi, my name is Robert. I'm an owner here in uh, Aventura. Um, and I'd like to commend all of the officials for identifying the need in the community for this uh, situation. Um, this is directed to structural uh, repairs, you say. In my community, we're just starting the 40-year uh, certification. The list of items in the 40-year certification, would they all be classified as structural repairs? Yes, those items that are associated with your recertification would be eligible. Okay, perfect. And, uh, Another issue that's very concerning, it, it sounds like we're totally dependent on the association and the board. And, and uh, we need their cooperation to open the doors for the owners to be able to access your help. And unfortunately, I look around, I don't see any board members, for example, from my as association and that, that's, that's a little concerning. I don't know why. Uh, the question is, I don't know if, uh, if they're going to cooperate, they're not going to cooperate. Um, I don't know what the agenda is. My question is, is there um, anything that you can do to uh, direct the information specifically to the boards and the associations. Do we have uh, any power to 
uh, force them to cooperate? How does this work? Without them, the owner, without them, the owners are, I mean, we can't do anything. So I'm going to take that one first. And I'm going to also ask Lourdes to talk more about the registry, okay? The registry is something new that provides much more transparency about what is going on inside these associations. So we think that's a great tool because all that information will be available publicly for you to see. And also, if you qualify, if any of you in this room qualify, we will reach out to your condominium association. Okay. All right. Lourdes, let's hear yes. the registry. Thank you. So, uh, you know, I just want to point you again to the county website. We have a, an extensive website, both on recertification and for the condo registry, um, which again, you know, you are your own building jurisdiction here in Aventura, but you will find common information. Um, and certainly the registry, re registry requirements do apply countywide. So that um, will apply to you, whether you're in Aventura or any other city. Um, with respect to uh, the reason I encourage you to do that is because that will spell out for you as a property owner what exactly all of the requirements are, what the law is, what the expectation is. Um, and certainly, you know, information is power. So, you know, even if your board members aren't here tonight, the information is there available 24-7. Um, we did webinars, uh, which we videotaped and have available on our website as well, providing instructions for the registry, recertification instructions. So this information is out there um, and available to the public. And so to the extent that, you know, we can assist you in, in accessing that information, you know, as a county, we're, we're more than happy to help. So I, I hope that gives you some assurance to, to the extent that, um, you know, the information continues to be available and your uh, condo board will be receiving notifications, not just for the instant recertification, but into the future. One of the measures that was taken was providing early noticing, mandating early noticing, precisely to address these issues that, that you have here, that boards and buildings are not prepared, right? Unfortunately, for many years, this was neglected and many associations find themselves needing these loans precisely because we were not all prepared in the right way. So, so your government is taking steps to, to help you and your boards um, be more responsible actors into the future, and, and that support will continue to be there. Is the registry uh, a list of uh, associations and boards that have been notified about this program? Well, what you see when you go to the portal, and you can view it, it's live today. Um, when you go to the county portal for the for the registry, what you see are associations that have the names of the associations that have either completed or begun the registration process. We did do a direct mail to, I believe there were over 6,000 associations that uh, qualified in Miami-Dade County, so they have all been contacted. We held three webinars and we had robust participation. Uh, we have had 2,000 begin the process of registering and we're, we're, we get phone calls every day. So we are helping others you know, to, to come online and comply. And we will be reaching out to, to those that haven't in the near future. <laughs> Certainly about the registry, they should not. With respect to recertification, even prior to the strengthening of the, the rules that was enacted in light, in light of Surfside, all jurisdictions took, uh, building, building jurisdictions were taking responsibility to notice. It just wasn't with quite the, now we're doing it two years in advance and then one year and the year it's due. So you'll get a total of three notices into the future. But certainly all jurisdictions had been noticing uh, associations in the year that they were due even before those reforms. So they shouldn't be pleading ignorance. <laughs> I know. Wait, and now we have our new uh, final speaker. I'm yeah. sorry. I keep thinking that, but yet there's one more. So that's great. We, we're happy to nice hear from short. everybody. So thank you. Uh, Lina Weisberg. I've been living in Aventura like 40 years, more, very long time. Um, regarding the gentleman in, in the gray sweater, uh, I like the idea when he was talking about the board of directors. At some point, I belong to a board of directors. And, you know, 
to tell you the truth, I don't know anything about construction. I, I was there because I was elected by, you know, my peers on the building. But in my opinion, uh, not only there should be more competent people, uh, but they maybe one idea is for the, the, the state, the county, uh, to have sitting there like an engineer, because since we're talking, everything is structural. Uh, I don't think many of the board of directors have an idea what, you know, about structures and all that. So just an idea to have very competent people when it gets to that. So I, I will also say that we have some really great engineers in Miami-Dade County. They're not available to replace anybody that uh, you may need to hire. But, um, you know, if you have questions or concerns, uh, we could certainly try to to address them. Yeah, I just want to add again, you know, I, I, this will be the third time I'm pointing you to to our website, but I, I think we know that we know that uh, association members, you know, are not necessarily um, engineers themselves and may not necessarily know what to do. Um, so the, the best thing that we can suggest that you do is take the time, you know, these, these web pages are not particularly long and, and we take care to make sure that the information is succinct and, and direct and, and understandable and digestible, um, you know, to the lay person. So I, I would advise you to, to go ahead and, and look at that and take the time to inform yourself. And of course, our expectation is that these reports are being done by professionals. So that's why you are appointed to commissioning a licensed engineer and ensuring, you know, especially when it's a threshold building, a, a building over three stories, that you are hiring the right type of professional so that their report can, you know, they can competently uh, create the report and, and, and have it be accepted by the jurisdiction. I just wanted to clarify because I was, I was told that I may not have answered the, the question from the, the gentleman in the yellow shirt. Um, if your question is that were your associations notified of the loan program, that, that we have not done. What the noticing that I was talking about was specifically noticing associations that they needed to register and comply with the registration requirement and, and post that information with the county. Similarly, all, all buildings that are uh, due for recertification do get noticed by their building jurisdiction. Um, with respect to the loan program, I believe there was uh, a, there were multiple press releases and, and there's been publicity around it, but we did not specifically notice about that. Thank you. Um, so I wanna first thank all of you for being here. I know it's not easy to come after work and a long day. So, so thank you all for being here and being engaged. Um, we know how important this issue is and, and the health and safety of our residents is our priority. I wanna thank the mayor for being here tonight. And I wanna thank, yes. Um, and of course, our directors, both Lourdes and um, Director Brown. I do wanna say that um, I know we talked about the website and I wanna let everybody know that it's www.miamidade.gov, just in case you, you wanted to know. And of course, as I said, we're gonna stay on individual questions. We're here to listen and to help. And um, if you need our cards or anything else, we're here for you. So thank you so much for coming this evening.